Today on the channel, fresh off the shelf, we've got the He-Man Masters of the Universe Deluxe Masterverse Movie He-Man. The spirit of the warrior will run Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Masters of the Universe unboxing and review. And today, from the Masterverse, we've got He-Man from the classic Masters of the Universe movie from the 80s, with a twist. We'll call it a twist. But remember, for all your He-Man needs and a whole lot more, make sure you're hitting up Entertainment Earth. Use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10% on all in-stock items. And of course, anything over $39 does ship free. And of course, we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We'll do some comparisons at the end. So without further ado, let's see what old He-Man from the 80s is up to. Of course, Dolph Lundgren's 80s He-Man Dolph, of course, at the top of the house with the Rocky movies and a ton of other franchises. And uh, he decided to be He-Man. Good for him. And uh, as a kid of the 80s who grew up, I enjoyed the movie. Not quite the He-Man I was looking for, but it was still enjoyable to a little kid. I understand how others outside of the little kid genre maybe didn't enjoy this movie as much as uh, the kids did, but it is a little bit cool. It is a little bit cheesy after all these years, and I can still watch this with some fondness. I definitely understand it's not for everybody, and I would be first in line for a new He-Man movie based on you know the original He-Man, maybe the comic book type stuff, maybe the filmation series, something more akin to that than kind of a new little world we got with this one. But it was an interesting take in the 80s, of course. Uh, and if you've never seen the movie, you should at least watch it at least once. But we have got figures in the past of He-Man from this based on uh, the movie. And basically, they always say it's based on the movie art, the art rendition, because there's something legality somewhere. I don't play a lawyer. I'll bring my dad in for that kind of stuff. Uh, but the Super 7 did come out with a version in the classics line of He-Man from the 80s that looked like Dolph, but close. That's kind of what we got going on right here, and I'm not wild about these head sculpts, but we'll see what they're looking like outside of the package here in a second. But let's check out the packaging first. Big, big window box. Of course, this is a deluxe one. I could see some people saying, is this really a deluxe figure? Uh, does this really, should this really count, or is this a cash grab? But we give Star Wars a hard time for it. We got to call it out. We got to give He-Man a call for it as well sometimes. I don't know if this truly feels deluxe. Once again, we'll see what happens when we get him out of the package. But definitely it's the big Masterverse style packaging. Masters of the Universe right there. He-Man at the bottom. Masterverse with all the hieroglyphics on the side. Heroic Defender of Eternia. He-Man over here. A little glamour shot. A little glamour shot action right there. And then on the back of the package we got He-Man. We got the cross sell. Unboxed all these on the channel. Go check out the, those videos if you did miss them. We got the blurbage right there. Let's see what it says about our old friend He-Man. The Heroic Defender of Eternia. The evil Skeletor captured Sorceress and claimed Castle Grayskull as his own. There's only one hero on Eternia who can save her. He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. His quest leads him across time and space to a strange planet called Earth. Even in this new world, He-Man embodies the power of Grayskull and proves he is the true master of the universe. Of course, there is a matching Skeletor coming out. He is in my Big Bad Toy Store pile of loot. We'll see if I do ship that fairly soon. I was hoping to get something else in there. I didn't want to pay the $4 and just ship it, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but that is coming, so look to that on the channel. I should say I actually just walked into one of my targets. If you're in your targets right now, they're resetting a lot of stores right now. And this was just dangling right there on the pegs. If you check out my figure hunt video, you'll see it live to tape, live to tape. But I did find this in the store, surprisingly enough. So let's get him out of the package. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what all the fuss is about. We got the old castle wall background there. The nice stones always looks pretty nice. Got that going on. See you later. Goodbye. And how about a little He-Man in the plastic prison? Got some stuff going on here. He's got a few different things going on. Of course, we're going to have to cut him out. We're going to have to free him. Uh, of course, they got the tape on the cape once again. I say it all the time. No tape on the cape. Somebody put that on a t-shirt. No tape on the cape because uh, we absolutely do hate it. We see that with Mattel fairly often and we're ripping off some color on that tape. Very, very frustrating. Not a big fan of that, as we've said in other He-Man videos, wrestling videos, you name it, videos. We've talked about it. We've talked about it. Get a couple of these daggers out. Looks like he's locked in at the shoulder. There's one. Probably the other shoulder. What do you know? There's two feet. Oh, yeah, I got to lock those feet in. Feet don't fail me now. 
So we got that, and I think we're good. I think we're good to pull them out. Of course, you got to have some extra hands for He-Man. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you have some extra hands? And then, what do you know? His sword, the old power sword, locked in as well. Bam, there it is. All right, we should be good, I hope. Let's see, let's see. Will He-Man come out? He-Man, come out and play, as one might say. And then he's, gosh, they make it so difficult sometimes. we got his little sheath back there locked in. All right, there it is. Sword. There it is. See you later up high. Whoa, like a Frisbee. It was spinning in the air. Very cool. Very cool. Another twist tie. See you later. We're going to put old He-Man to the back here, and we're going to take a look at some of the stuff he's got going on. Boy, I don't know what to think about this one, but we got a lot of different extra accessories with this one, and I guess we'll start it off with the hands. He's got the old Hulk Hogan hands going on. He's got the old flayed out arm. He's got the arm. He's going to do one of these, it looks like. I mean, that's what he's set up for right here. I guess he's doing the sword pose. That's Conan's sword pose. What am I doing? So I don't know what's going on there, but he does got that going on. We do get a fisted hand, one fisted hand. That's all it takes. So we do got a fist, and then we get an extra gripping hand. So two gripping hands, a splayed out hand, and a fisted hand. I'm here for that. Choose your own hand adventure, as we always do say. And then we got a couple of daggers. Looks like he's got two different knife daggers. Uh, looking really good here. Don't mind these at all. Definitely different here. This almost looks like the Eye of Thundera. It's like he's getting ready to say Thunder, Thunder, and we're getting our properties mixed up. Maybe this is, uh, who knows? Is it Thundercats? Is it He-Man? Is it Conan? What are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, but he should have a spot to hold these, and it looks like he does. We got one in the back, one on the side. We'll talk about those here in a second, but he's got both of his blades there if need be. Got a blaster gun. Always seemed weird to me. Of course, it was very spacey kind of movie and stuff. He was shooting blaster guns. Felt really strange to me to see He-Man shooting a gun for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe it was strange to you as a kid as well. All sculpted in black. Uh, looking good. I guess it is what it is. A little blaster space type gun. And then you do get the power sword here. Definitely different than what we're used to, what we're accustomed to. Our first thoughts on the sword. But it is the one from the movie, I guess we'll call it here. You got the nice sculpt on the handle. You got the sculpting on the bottom. Got the nice gray blade here. They're very bendable, very movable, of course. Then you got kind of the gold ornate holder there. Looking good. It is what it is. And then we get the heads. And let's look at both of these heads first. Now, this second head here is really interesting because it basically looks like He-Man from the Filmation series. It looks like that with just a few little changes, a few little tweaks, like he would fit into the movie. So this is Mattel taking creative, poetic license, whatever you want to call it with this. But it definitely has a feel to the old Filmation he-Man head, of course, the classic toy line is what that reminds me of. Uh, nice kind of mustard hair going on, not as yellowy as Prince Adam or He-Man back then. And just a little bit updated to kind of meet the movie is what this looks like. Not sure if I hate it, not sure if I like it. It's somewhere definitely in the middle. And then the head that's on here, it's like supposed to look like Dolph Lundgren. I almost said Dolph Ziggler. Almost looks like Dolph Lundgren, but it doesn't at the same time. And I guess that's how you dance around uh, the inter intellectual property rights, things like that is you get it as close as you can up to the legal limit, and that's how it feels right here. I don't know if in a million years if somebody handed me this head on its own and said, who is this, that I would even say Dolph Lundgren, I would say He-Man, I don't know what I would say. I'd say, you know what, that's that classic early 80s movie, Beastmaster. That's the star of Beastmaster, that's who that is. So maybe this could be a Beastmaster custom for some of you guys. Uh, one of, that's one of those movies that was on all the time when I was a little kid, old Beastmaster. Not sure I ever watched it all the way through. I'm sure I did, but it doesn't ring a bell. And it's been a long time since I even thought about Beastmaster. But definitely has that look to him right there. But an interesting looking figure. The head, maybe I'm going to have to get used to. But if I look past the head and I look at the rest of the body, a pretty cool looking figure in all honesty here. It looks like a, a He-Man type character, a Gladiator type character. Uh, definitely a guy that uh, has seen some things and done some things. He's definitely ornate. Uh, you could see him in a Roman Colosseum, maybe something like that. Who knows? But definitely an interesting look to this. And it feels okay in the hand. It feels nice. And of course, he's got a perfect cape here. It is cape season year-round, we found out over the last couple of years. And he's got a nice cape here. It feels like a cape. Uh, nice color to it, of course. Got a nice maroon with gold trim around it. Looks really good. Always do like a cape. I definitely like the soft goods more than if they would have given us a plastic cape. So I do like that. Uh, Articulation-wise, obviously the head's going to be removable. Side to side on the head, you're a little bit limited on his big shoulder guards there. Uh, arms do go around. Once again, you are limited on the shoulder guards. The shoulder guards got a little bit of movement to them to move out of the way, but you do got some limitations there. Big old bicep cut right there, and then you got double-jointed pinless elbows playing all the hits. You guys know I'm here for that. Then the hand is removable. Boy, a bit loose in this elbow, though. Well, maybe not. 
Eh, a little bit of looseness. Not as tight as I would like it to be. It's a little loose, but not terrible. Not terrible at all. It's okay. Uh, we do get a little hula hoop at the top. Then, of course, traditional waist. He can do those big old He-Man splits if he needs to jump over uh, Skeletor or something like that. He could do that. Of course, you do got a thigh cut. Double jointed pinless knees once again. Boot cut. Ankles up, down, side to side, back and forth. So got a lot of action right there. Looking at this outfit he has a little bit, like I talked about the big shoulder guards. I got some sculpting into him. Kind of a nice bronzish, goldish color throughout there. Uh, looking very heavy. Of course, they hold the cape together. He gets down to his harness there. Very classic He-Man style, but no H, no nothing saying this is He-Man like we're really accustomed to in the properties that came before this. He's got wrapping around the biceps that are sculpted in. He does got his harness here. I believe this harness can be removed if you want to. Uh, it might be a challenge to get back on, but it definitely can be removed. you got a spot on the back to hold the sword if you need be. And it looks like the sword might even go all the way down and in. Let's see. So that's an interesting one. So it goes all the way down, and then at the bottom, there's a little bit of a sheath. Usually, historically, we got a whole one that covers the whole sword. It just hits the bottom part down there. So that's a little bit different. I can't remember in my head if that's movie accurate or not. But definitely something different there. He does got a spot on the side for one dagger, and then he's got one on his shoe. Oh, lost it. Lost it. Oh, did I lose it in the carpet? Uh, lost it to the carpet. Hard times. Got it, though. Got it. Uh, but one fits down in his boot, and I don't know if it matters either or. It looks like that fits there. This one fits perfectly on the side. Uh-oh. No, that one does not fit. What are we doing here? What are we doing? Is this too big down here too, I think? Nope. Okay, the bigger one goes in the boot. The smaller one goes kind of off to his hip. It's a little interesting how... No, once again... That, oh, no, there it does. Jeez. Just took a while. You got to force it a little bit. But it does look a little weird how low this hangs down. Once again, that could be movie accurate, but it feels like it needs to be just a hair higher. He does got a little bit of a sideways on his belt, like his belt's kind of cockeyed a little bit, but it is sculpted that way. There is no move in that from what I'm seeing there, so I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. He's got a beautiful belt buckle right here. I don't know who got that for him, but he does have that. Of course, got the holster on the side. You can put his blaster in. A little bit hard to get in there. You got to move the body around. Uh, just the way it is kind of done, it's a little bit of a tough fit in there, but it will go in there. Uh, but you can, I'm happy to report, store everything on the figure. So that is always a good thing. I always like to be able to store all my weapons and stuff. If they're not going to be able to hold them all, they can at least store them. And we do get that here, so that is a big plus, uh, if you ask me. Does he fit on a ringside collectible stand? Of course, make sure you get the Mattel stands, as I always say. What do you know? He fits like a glove right there, looking really, really good. Uh, an interesting one. This is one that's not going to be for everybody, that's for sure. There's some people that love this movie, some people that hate this movie, very, very few people in the middle. I'm okay with this, though. I like what they're doing here. I like the idea of bringing the whole Masterverse together. I do just wish the head sculpt was more Dolph Lundgren-esque instead of Beastmaster-esque. That's my biggest gripe here. I like what they attempted to do with this one. This is an interesting one. We might play around with some other figures. You might get use out of other He-Man heads with this one. Maybe swap this on the original version, uh, the Viking He-Man, things like that. So that's an interesting go-to-market strategy, especially on here, giving us that classic He-Man we thought we were going to get with the movie, maybe. I don't know, but I'm all for a classic Dolph Lundgren head, which we just seemingly have not received yet. Maybe one day, but I'm not going to hold my breath for that. Uh, I did grab the Super 7 version here. Similar, but different, we'll call it. Uh, not as ornate of a cape, but a lot of similarities between these two. Uh, I definitely would say the Super 7, to me at least, looks a little bit more like Dolph Lundgren. Uh, you guys can tell me what you think, but a lot of similarities between this one. He does not have the, the uh, knife down on the boot, but he does have it on the hip. Has the blaster on the other hip. Uh, he does got a forearm guard on this one. We do get it on this one. So we do match up on that. You match up on the harnesses. A lot of things are matching up. Similar but different, we'll call this. And basically, at the time, you're looking at about double the price point for this one. So a little bit more expensive, but of course, that's Super 7. These are getting pretty hard to get. There was a time when these came out really at the tail end of the classics is when this was with Super 7 and stuff. And they didn't really sell the hottest. And there were some deals to be had. But I believe these have really skyrocketed in the last few years, at least last time I looked. It's been a while, but I do think this Dolph is fairly hard to get. So this one, a lot more pocketbook friendly for sure. An interesting one. Like I said, not for everybody, but you guys let me know your thoughts, what you think about it. 
I did grab a couple other He-Man. There's the regular He-Mans, and then, of course, the 40th anniversary. We've got a lot more He-Man figures in the Masterverse than I was thinking. When I was looking, I've got some doubles, things like that. So we're really building out a He-Man world, a He-Man universe, a multiple of He-Man in the collection. But very, very cool. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on it. Were you a kid like me that enjoyed the movie, just, just enjoyed it because you were a kid? Or were you one of the ones that hated it from the get-go? Were you one of those kids? You guys can let me know in the comments down below. And let me know if you're picking this up or if this is an easy pass for you. Should be hitting Target stores fairly soon. Of course, the Entertainment Earths of the World uh, as well. You should be able to pick him up there fairly soon. And then there's going to be a matching Skeletor, so stay tuned for that. We'll have that unboxing on the channel sooner than you might imagine. That's what I'll say there. Of course, you made it this far. You might as well like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on the old notification bell. we got videos every single day, including everything Masters of the Universe, as you guys know, on top of everything else we do here on the channel. Best way to support the channel, still, yes it is, still the Patreon. You can get early access to videos like this, bonus content, early content like i just said i'll say it twice why not giveaways q and a's you name it a lot going on over the old patreon channel and a lot going on over at pro wrestling tees as well you can support the channel over there and then don't forget social media sir paul 64 is where you're going to find me on twitter instagram the underscore kyle underscore peterson so for he man i'm kyle see you guys all real soon on the channel we've got the 80s classic Beastmaster unboxing and review